Joining us this morning is attorney Heather Crum to tell us all about it. Good morning, Heather. Good morning. Good morning. Mediation. It kind of sounds like people are going to argue something out, but then there has to be a middle ground. Yeah. Is that how you could simply explain mediation? Sort of. I think that the goal of mediation is for the parties to not have to have a judge decide, because the judge gets a day where he gets to meet these people, and it's hard to make that decision. Mm -hmm. um, so they get control over their case, and they get to decide. It, a lot of people, when they go to mediation, they're able to agree to pretty much everything without argument. It's just figuring out the details. Um, but for the harder cases, it does involve give and take from both sides. So this would be a case where you kind of avoid court then? You kind of just take yes. care mm -hmm. of it before, kind of level things out? That is the goal. Oh, okay. Um, obviously, court is much more expensive than right. mediation, mm -hmm. okay. and you have no idea what you're going to get. So yeah. it gives Fair. some certainty. <laughs> so can you give us a couple of examples in which mediation would be more appropriate? Um, I think that mediation is pretty much always appropriate. The only mm -hmm. exception is going to be if there's serious domestic violence or mm -hmm. really domestic violence in general because there's an element of control and manipulation that is hard, harder in a mediation context. Um, some mediators are trained with domestic violence and are able to maybe navigate that, but that would be the only exception. Mm -hmm. um, Otherwise, really, any case is going to be good for mediation. What about, yeah, if there's kids then or yep. a dog, something like that, where it's a little bit then, say, somebody's car that you're kind yes. of going over? So every state, every case in North Dakota that involves kids, um, mm -hmm. so divorces, parenting cases, it gets referred to the state mediation program. Mm -hmm. So every party gets free mediation, um, six free hours. So oh. the goal for the state is to try to avoid the trauma for parents and for kids to have a more stable foundation and for parents to get that good start co-parenting because they have to figure out differences mm -hmm. throughout the rest of their kids' mm -hmm. lives. Absolutely. So. so when you're do going through mediation, is there usually only one attorney present or does each side get to you know kind of have an attorney there mm -hmm. to represent their best interests? It can be any combination. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time it's just the parties and the mediator. I think that it changes the tone when you have an attorney there because there's a lot more adversarial at that point. Mm -hmm. But um, you can certainly have uh, attorneys there in a lot of cases, especially the more legally complicated cases, the attorneys are going to be present to help their clients. Mm -hmm. um, you can also stop at any point and call your attorney if you have some yeah. questions or however you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Can I backtrack you a little bit? And yes. I heard six free hours. Yes. Free is always like my definition of I like that, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, in all seriousness, this is a different case. But what does that entail then, the six free hours? Uh, or why am I given that? Why is that mm -hmm. an option? So the state really wants cases with kids to be resolved out of court. Um, yeah. Cases that go to court tend to have worse outcomes for kids because of the fighting between the parents. It tends mm -hmm. to drag on. It tends to be less um, friendly. Yeah. So the goal is to get those parents into mediation, let them resolve their differences, and figure things out for their family. Yeah. Um, you get six hours. It's not actually six hours of actual mediation time because I have to meet with the parties ahead of time, and I have to do a summary at the end like mm -hmm. detailing all of yeah. the agreements. But okay. it ends up usually being about four hours of actual mediation time okay. for people. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So to kind of piggyback off of Heidi's question then, then uh, what is the cost of mediation? Um, or do, is it kind of a case-by-case -case basis? It varies depending on the mediator. Um, so with our office, if you're through the state mediation program, we will continue at the state mediation rate afterwards. Um, otherwise, it is going to be at uh, the price. It, the, the amount varies depending on the complexity yeah. of the case. It's mm -hmm. usually... I would say for most mediators in the area, it's going to be between two fifty and three hundred dollars an hour. Okay. okay. Most parties split that between the two of them, so it ends up being about like one hundred and twenty-five dollars mm -hmm. each. Okay. Now, once everything is settled, how? Uh, what's the after plan? I guess what, what happens afterwards? The mediation. So, if you have attorneys, usually the attorneys will draft up a stipulation. The parties will sign it, and then they file everything with the court. The court signs the judgment, and you're done. Um, if you are pro se, then you have the ability to do that yourselves. The mediator can do an agreement that the parties can sign um, if the parties want to do that. Or if they want to do it themselves, they can do it themselves. And then the parties are responsible for drafting up the proposed judgment, the proposed order, and then they file it with the court. Mm -hmm. So once you're done with mediation and you've agreed to everything, you're pretty much done. In the clear then. Yes. And so we were kind of talking before we came out that you are a mediator, and that's like a special certification that yes. people need to get. Not just anyone can walk in and be right. like, I'm here to be fair. <laughs> so, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about uh, your how you became a mediator or maybe why you uh, came to that decision to be one. Mm -hmm. So I've actually been um, interested in alternative dispute resolution my entire career. So I spent, when I was working, I worked for the federal government before, mm -hmm. and I did a lot of alternative dispute resolution there. Um, I had some special training in it. When I moved to North Dakota, I took a special class. Um, it was actually 
120 credit hours. Wow. Not every mediator does that, but um, I took a special class to become a family mediator. And you have to do ongoing certification every year, so or every I think it's every three years, you have to have um, a certain number of hours each time. Mm -hmm. So um, the mediation, anybody who is an actual mediator in North Dakota has special training. Wow, and you're at Revive Law Group, yes. and so if somebody needs a mediator, just wants to talk something over mm -hmm. and get a feel, uh, where can they find Revive Law Group? So we are in Mandan. Um, we have a website, and it's, I believe, revivelawgroup.com. And then we also, can you can call, and it's 701-751-7188. Yeah. Wonderful. Heather Crum, Revive Law, thanks so much for yes. coming in and sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heather. All right, stick around. We have more North Dakota today right after this.